Hello, my name is uh, Michael Schoenderfer. I'm the CTO at Hello Again. And today I want to share with you how we are trying to achieve our uh, next goal of uh, building and uh, maintaining a thousand apps, uh, where we are uh, pretty much halfway through and afterwards, of course, going to uh, go for the next milestone. Um, first, I'd like to start with uh, explaining to you a little bit of what we do at Hello Again. Um, in general, we want to make our clients, customers more valuable. To give you a bit of an idea, uh, this is usually resulting in a customer loyalty solution, um, uh, most likely an app where you can have a bonus system and collect points, just to give you an idea uh, what we provide. Uh, what differentiates us uh, from a lot of our competitors is that every client gets their own customized solution. Uh, instead of having one big Hello Again app where all the data is shared with everybody, uh, we really uh, want to build communities and uh, keep the data in our clients' hand. Who are our customers? Um, to give you some examples, uh, we have a lot of clients in retail stores, um, also online shops. We also provide solutions for the service industry. For example, hairdressers is a very um, good example, but also economic regions uh, like cities. Um, the size of our clients varies quite a lot uh, from having a few thousand users uh, in their community to a few million users. To give you an idea of our feature set, uh, what we provide, uh, our apps uh, usually have a user management. Uh, you can have uh, different loyalty mechanics to collect points, including uh, gamification. For example, for purchases, you get a certain number of points. On the right side, you see uh, one of our clients' apps uh, from Müller, a drugstore chain. Uh, here you can collect Müller Blüten and redeem them uh, for rewards when purchasing uh, again. We are trying to incorporate uh, user feedback. We do that by providing polls. You can um, get user ratings. Uh, you have different forms and also uh, potentially a chat feature. Uh, what adds to the complexity is we provide integrations to third-party uh, services, for example, booking tools for hairdressers, uh, and we also provide sharing features uh, with uh, services like Facebook and WhatsApp. Um, we also introduced payments now, uh, and one of our core features is messaging to send push notifications um, or emails, also via automated uh, actions, for example, uh, at your birthday, you get a certain number of points and a, a message via push notification. Also, another big topic for us is analytics and reporting. Uh, reporting. What we take care of uh, in the whole process of uh, creating a, a customer loyalty solution is we develop the mobile um, and or web app. We also do the testing which adds uh, a lot to our uh, complexity. Uh, and we also do the App Store release management, which has to be done individually for each app. We also provide a CRM uh, where our clients can manage their users. This also includes, uh, includes, as I said before, a marketing automation and statistics where you can see a screenshot uh, of our dashboard, which uh, gives you a rough overview of the, the current statistics. We also do not only do server development, we uh, take care of the infrastructure uh, and do the maintenance. All of this um, results in certain challenges compared to uh, providing a different architecture. For example, if we would have only one app or we would have um, a smaller set of clients with a bigger number of uh, users. What we have to do is update a lot of uh, individual apps. Uh, that means uh, submitting those apps to the app stores and uh, other uh, challenges uh, that come with it, which I will uh, go into detail later. You have to manage the complexity overall with the big feature set, um, with different clients, different branches, uh, and different uh, sizes. 
it's easy to introduce regressions for other apps if you work on, on a certain feature, uh, which has to be tested um, all the time. Uh, and it is uh, sometimes difficult to optimize for all different use cases. For example, you develop a feature for a user, uh, for a client that has only a thousand users, you still have to optimize it to run uh, in case a, a client with two million user uses the same feature set. To give you an idea uh, how we uh, built our whole architecture, um, in the core is uh, our Hello Again server. It runs uh, multiple instances of our backend, but they are all uh, multi-tenant capable. Uh, that means we can scale quite easily if we need more resources. Uh, for example, we have uh, Cyber Monday or a Black Shopping Week where really uh, a lot of resources are required, we can easily scale with the Google Cloud services um, automatically. Um, we have to in integrate into different communication gateways uh, like email, push, also sometimes uh, client-specific uh, services. We provide a dashboard, um, as I mentioned before, and then we have course have the client facing uh, front end uh, parts uh, where we have different mobile apps that run for each user and we also provide uh, a web app solution that is basically a trimmed down version of the app. So how do we achieve this goal of uh, providing so many different solutions that are tailored to, to each and every client? but still being able to do this without 10,000 developers. First of all, our server backend is multi-tenant capable. Uh, that means we can run the same instances uh, multiple times um, and we don't have to do it individually for each client. That also means we do not provide uh, on-premise hosting and therefore we have to say no uh, quite often if certain uh, potential clients request it. All of this makes releasing a lot easier and a lot harder. It's easier because we only have to update one server. It's harder because you automatically update the server for all apps and you cannot test each and every app combination every day when we do a release. Uh, that means we need a lot of uh, automated tests. Um, and we can also not have uh, any downtime because uh, update for one client's use cases should not affect uh, a different uh, app. Also, one big part uh, of our core competency is the uh, modular app system, which I'll explain uh, later. We also decided to develop with React Native, so we don't have to um, develop both versions of an app. Uh, and it helps us also to um, uh, have very JavaScript uh, uh, heavy code base uh, and uh, our developers can hop quite easily between the, the components. Uh, we also did a lot of automation, especially with continuous delivery, but also with setting up certain processes uh, when creating the apps and so on. Um, another big part here is our app builder, which helps us uh, create our solutions without uh, having to code a single line in most use cases and it's non-developer uh, friendly uh, where our project management team can handle most of the tasks. We also use code push to do JavaScript only updates therefore we can bypass the app store and um, we uh, try to provide easy integrations for other developers so in case very client-specific uh, requirements are needed, we can outsource this to other developers or to the client themselves, uh, for example, via webhooks. Here's a diagram how we uh, built our modularized uh, app framework. Uh, on the uh, basis, we have our app framework that is used for each and every app. On top of that, we have certain extensions. Uh, one extension that is used every time is the authentication extension or most of the time we use the loyalty extension and then we have certain feature sets 
that uh, can be used depending on the client, for example, a chat feature, as well as very client-specific uh, extensions that should not interfere with any other code. On top of that, we have certain configurations. So an authentication extension can look very different for one app than uh, for the other app. For example, uh, which uh, login providers you use, whether you use email and password or phone number. Internally uh, in the app, we use Redux uh, for communication between extensions that forces us to have uh, very good internal APIs. And uh, to give you an idea what an extension is, an extension can provide different screens, uh, certain uh, Redux actions. It also can uh, bundle certain native and React native dependencies uh, and uh, can uh, listen to certain events to do specific uh, customer or uh, generic actions. Uh, that also means, for example, if we need the Facebook SDK to do the Facebook login, uh, in case a client doesn't need that feature, we can just uh, extract it into its own extension and it doesn't uh, bundle in the uh, whole app. When building the app, we then fetch the list of extensions that are necessary, all the configurations, and only build what is uh, necessary. And therefore, we can uh, get rid of all the client-specific code uh, in, in the common uh, extensions. This uh, then heavily requires certain configuration items. We have different levels. For example, we have the configuration on the build time where all the navigation structure is already uh, yeah, baked into the app. Also the theming uh, or things like a startup screen. Then we have certain runtime configurations on the server that could mean how many points do I get for registration or how many uh, uh, check-ins do I need for a certain challenge to succeed. On the app this could mean uh, on the tutorial slides, what text do I have there? How many tutorial slides do I have or nothing at all? We could introduce a maintenance mode or for the sign-up process, which fields do I even provide? These are all things we can then um, update without having to, to release a new version of the app um, during runtime. And then there's obviously certain dynamic code like uh, content like rewards, news article, events that is uh, fetched depending on the client. And our apps are fully translatable. That uh, helps us individualize them uh, as well for the different clients. What I'd like to share with you are some lessons we've learned from this approach. Um, one may be obvious uh, might be that automation can be really hard. Uh, a lot harder than we uh, originally anticipated for certain things. But in an environment like this or in context of us, it usually pays off. Um, for updating apps, there are certain pitfalls uh, which we didn't uh, anticipate. For example, every few months, uh, you have to update the or accept the license agreement for Apple. Um, and this requires two-factor authentication. And we would have to call the, the client every time. So we built our own system with physical phones that get uh, the two-factor authentication codes uh, and automatically uh, do the, uh, the, the manual labor tasks to a certain extent. For testing apps, we found out that the Firebase app distribution um, is a really useful tool to let our clients test the apps before. Uh, and in case our the, the users or the, the, the clients can't even do that because they even don't have a phone or only have an iPhone and not an Android phone. We built an app simulator into our dashboard uh, where they can directly in the dashboard test the newest version of their app. And something we are really in investing heavily is an app automation framework uh, that works for us so we can test all the different uh, variations of our apps uh, automatically. And yeah, something uh, that might be also very obvious, but uh, yeah, 
paid off quite a lot uh, for us that we have a high code coverage for automated tests. Um, so we don't have to do manual tests for each and every case uh, when releasing a new server version. We also um, do regular external uh, penetration tests. That's something that is also crucial as we have so many different use cases and variations and you cannot think of every uh, scenario on your own. Um, so uh, external uh, personnel uh, can really dig deep and look into what are some uh, backdoors um, and, and help you strengthen your system. And you're really dependent on third-party services. Uh, if Google says a certain SDK version is required now, uh, you have to update each and every app um, in the next two weeks, for example, where our architecture helps quite a lot, but uh, that also means we have to update every app. Um, some of the downsides of our approach, uh, it can be uh, very difficult sometimes to change even small things. Um, and it therefore forces you to say no sometimes. Um, the complexity increases exponentially uh, and you always have to think of which uh, use case you're affecting with this uh, uh, line of code, uh, which might be uh, not the case if you um, implement an individual app. As I said, we need to update every app individually uh, and there's still certain setup uh, tasks required. Uh, but last but not least, uh, I want to uh, explain to you the advantages of this approach. We don't need any native developer. Uh, all our front-end code is JavaScript uh, only. So all the JavaScript developers out there, uh, we're looking for new developers. Um, there's no need to run several different instances of the server. Uh, we can update them uh, at once and also share resources a lot better. Um, and our apps are still optimized to a certain extent as um, uh, code-wise uh, and size-wise uh, because we only need certain extensions for each and every app. Every bug fix we implement and every improvement we implement in one app benefits all uh, other apps as well. And it forces you to make clear internal APIs uh, which help a help to create a better architecture overall uh, and helps you on the long run with maintenance. Um, lastly, I want to say thank you for this opportunity. Um, we are really, really looking for uh, people that help us support this architecture I explained and uh, help us reach our goal of uh, a thousand and soon more apps. Uh, so in particular, we are looking for uh, team leads for server development and, and front-end uh, development uh, and in general for back-end developers with Python um, and front-end developers that are JavaScript-aware, React Native and Vue.js. Thank you very much.